Some of the biggest leaders in retail convening in Las Vegas this week for this year's Shop Talk Conference. Our Sarah Eisen is live on the scene, fresh off an interview with Pinterest's Bill Reddy. Hey, Sarah. Hi, good morning. Good to see you, Carl. Yes, here for Shop Talk, where Bill Reddy is a newish CEO of Pinterest. He joined last summer, came from Google, where he ran e commerce. And he's here because he's on a mission to reframe Pinterest as a shopping and e commerce platform. Platform. They actually made some news here where they announced that Shuffles, which is their new app, it's, it's kind of a collage making app that's been growing really fast with Gen Z, will now do direct links for shopping. So all part of the transformation that he's trying to pull off right now at Pinterest. I asked Reddy, are you convincing Wall Street here? Because a lot of people think of Pinterest as a scrapbooking social site, not necessarily as e-commerce. Here's what he said. More than half the users are there to shop. So what we're doing now is making it so that not only is it solving digital window shopping, we're opening all the stores, making it so that you can easily take action on the things you find at Pinterest. It's been a big part of how we've re-accelerated growth with users and have grown faster than the broader ad market even through a downturn. We've managed to grow faster than much of our peer set uh, d despite the downturn in the market. But you, you are an ad revenue model company. That's right. So where does the shopping fit in? Do you take a piece of the transaction or just charge higher ads? It, it's a great question. So we're an ad model, which means that we're helping to connect the user to a place to buy from. We're not a retailer. We have no intention to be a retailer. We don't take commissions because we're not a marketplace either. So we're not competing with those retailers. So when we say that we're opening up all those, you know, opening up all the storefronts, it's the storefront of all the retailers and all the brands that want to connect with those users. So we are fully, fully committed to being a great partner to retailers and brands. But from Wall Street's point of view, they want to know the monetization strategy, right? Mm -hmm. How much is this going to take to invest if you're doing a whole strategy change here around Pinterest? And how quickly does it pay off in a hard ad market? Yeah, so, you know, it's, you know, it's definitely a choppy market out there. And, you know, I can't say better, any better than anybody else when there's less choppiness in the market. But as a 1% market share company, what I've told our team and what I've said on our earnings calls, like as a 1% market share company, even in a contracting market, it's such a huge market, we can grow a lot as long as we can demonstrate better performance. And we're completely differentiated from the rest of social media. Most of social media, if not all of social media in the Western world, has the user in a lean back entertainment mode. On Pinterest, the user's in a lean forward mode. They're there with intent and purpose. They're there to shop. They're there to go put together a great recipe. They're there to go plan travel. And so with that lean forward intent, we can go help the user take more action, which is great for the user, but also highly monetizable from an ads perspective. So it's great value for ad partners and we think can be a great source of revenue. At the same time, we're in a period where across technology, you're seeing efforts to boost efficiencies and cut costs and manage expenses. We're seeing layoffs. Where are you in that process? You know, so, you know, I've talked about this on our last couple earnings calls that, you know, we're committed to finding margin expansion in our own business. But even more importantly, we're helping our advertisers find more efficiency in their business. So as we've been bringing better measurability into our ad product and better ability for our advertisers to connect with users in a way where the user is taking action on a product, we're seeing that's driving benefit for those advertisers as well. AI, that, that, everyone has to have an AI strategy. So how far along are you into that process when it comes to boosting consumer yep. data? So, you know, AI and computer vision has really been at the core of Pinterest for some time. And as we're now tasking that AI with creating better shopping recommendations, we're seeing really good results from that. Tangible evidence of that, when a user looks for related items on our site, uh, which you, know, you can discover in real world imagery, uh, so, you know, went and saw Taylor Swift here in town last night. <laughs> Lucky. Um, as if you thought, oh, I really want to have that pair of shoes that she wore on this particular set, you can find an image of that on Pinterest. You can find out what those shoes were. But then Pinterest will also make recommendations of, okay, here's those exact shoes, but here's a whole bunch of ones like it so you can shop the look. And we consistently get 95% plus relevancy scores from our users on those recommendations. So when we've pointed the AI toward these shopping problems, you know, 95% plus relevancy from users is phenomenally high. And it's both because of our AI capabilities, 
but AI is only as good as the signal upon which it's acting. And so we have 450 million plus users on Pinterest that make these product associations. So when we pair that with really good AI, that's how we're able to make those really fantastic recommendations. Are you to users. more advanced on AI than your competitors? Well, I would say, I, th I would say the the primitives of AI and sort of the building blocks through cloud computing. The building blocks of AI are going to be broadly accessible via cloud compute. Where there's going to be big differences are going to be who has data sets, who has first party signal to inform and train that AI, and then who has a user experience that is unique that both gives the user a great experience, but also collects more signal from users to make better and better recommendations. And we already have that deeply ingrained in our platform, and so we feel like we're really well positioned with this next generation of AI. Speaking of dance videos, TikTok CEO on Capitol Hill. How does that benefit you if TikTok is banned in the United States? You know, we're, uh, I think the thing that people don't fully appreciate is that we're fundamentally different than the rest of social media. Most of social media is about entertainment. The user's in a lean back mode for entertainment. We have the user in a lean forward mode with intent and purpose, whether it's to shop or to make or to do or to buy. And so, you know, we're very focused on not only how we fulfill those intents, but I think one of the things about social media broadly, without commenting on any one specific company, is I do think social media broadly, and I've commented on this publicly, I think social media broadly has started to have a lot of toxicity deeply embedded in the business model. Uh, and it was a, the business model was about what could make you view the longest, and what makes you view the longest, the things that triggered you, the things that made you feel angry or envious uh, or upset or worried. And those basest instincts are the things that AI and social media started to prey upon. And so I think, you know, not only for social media, but with the next generation of really powerful AI, it's going to be really important that we're much more intentional as an industry about what we ask the AI to do. And so I've come out and publicly committed that at Pinterest, we're using that AI to build for positivity, that we want to lead to better mental health mm. outcomes uh, on our platform. And we're off to a really good start on that. We've released some research that we did with Berkeley that shows that users that spend time on Pinterest actually come away feeling better, protecting against rising burnout uh, and anxiety. And so we want to continue investing in how we leverage this next generation of AI to build a positive platform that helps people feel better about themselves and to do more in the real world, not just stay glued to a screen. So Ready not willing to go after TikTok necessarily, though. The analysts are pretty excited about the fact that they could gain in ad market share if TikTok gets banned in the United States, not to mention engagement with 150 million people in America on TikTok, spend, TikTok spending at least an hour and a half a day. Obviously, it would benefit all the social sites. But guys, I thought it was interesting that he used the answer and the opportunity to draw a line between Pinterest and other competitors. And I think that the subtext there was Meta and Twitter and TikTok, where the, uh, the AI and the business model is built around what he calls toxi toxicity, negativity, videos that pick up a lot of steam that are often very negative. And he's trying to prove that you can have a business model where that doesn't exist, where it's positive, where people come to get inspired and shop. And that's really how it fits in with the overall new strategy change and the, and the changes that he's making at the company. So far, Wall Street's impressed. The stock has had a good year. Uh, but clearly, there's some questions out there because it's way off of the highs that we saw back in 2021. Yeah, nice upgrade to today over uh, at UBS. And uh, interesting, he did everything but uh, compare uh, social media to cigarettes, which Benioff has already done. Sarah, it does raise the larger question of how the consumer is faring in this new uh, post-banking stress environment. Uh, we've seen some conflicting signals on credit card data lately. Sure, and that's going to take some time, right? We, we have to see just how severe the credit crunch is when it comes to banks and lending. We know they're going to tighten up on lending, but the question is how much? And I think there are big questions, you know, as it relates to the Pinterest conversation about the ad market. One reason the knock against the stock and other stocks like this is that they are dependent on ads. And at, you heard him say it's been choppy. He didn't really get into specifics because they're in a quiet period right now ahead of earnings, but clearly that's been the concern. So if, if folks like Ready can prove that there's a higher value in the ads, which is why UBS upgraded the stock today, then he's got sort of a differentiating story and narrative on Wall Street. But ultimately, look, it's cyclical. It's going to come down to the economy, as you say, Carl, because we don't quite know the impact of this banking crisis. And 
And like, like all these ad companies and media companies, they're going to be exposed. I, I just want to let you know, as far as the consumer goes, lots of conversations here about where the consumer is. You have to have a strong brand. You still have to have pricing power. You have to be in the right categories. Tomorrow on Squawk on the Street, I'll bring you a conversation exclusively with the CEO of Levi's, Chip Berg, who's here at this conference as well. I'm going to do a stage panel with him. Also going to be talking to Tapestry CEO, Joanne Cravasia, because we want to see what across luxury, if that's starting to break as well. It's been sort of the last, last man standing when it comes to the consumer and being able to really see some seriously high prices and not much of a slowdown so far. For sure, Sarah. Look forward to all that. Uh, we'll talk to you again soon.